Good morning, everyone, and happy Tuesday. Welcome back to Market Open and Ticker Symbol Live, where we try to explore ARK Invest's holding data to see how they're investing in our future today. I have a special episode for you today. I've been getting a lot of requests about looking at the data and helping understand uh, the data specifically. Uh, what we've been doing in the past is using the data to explore which stock to talk about today, usually focusing on ARK Invest's biggest outsized buy of the day. We've actually been doing a really good job keeping up with ARK Invest. There's usually been about one outsized buy, maybe two each day. And in the last two weeks, we've covered most of them. So what I'd like to do today is flip the script and talk about the ARK Reactor and the state of the ARK, which is uh, the two tools that I've been developing on the back end to help me research ARK Invest from the bottom up and tie it back to that vision of the top down, that top down vision of the future, right? So I'll talk a little bit about my investment framework today. I'll show you a little deeper dive of the ARC Invests, uh, the ARC Reactor. That's the tool that I made to go and develop this daily podcast. And then I'll, t I'll show you the state of the ARC, which is something that my patrons uh, on Patreon actually have access to right now so that they can interact with the data in a few interesting ways and make their own discoveries, right? So that way you don't have to just discover it through listening to me. Um, what I think I do is I add context to the data and I display it in a way that kind of starts pulling some of the signals out of the noise. Uh, you know, that's sort of my mathematical and scientific background is to do that. So hopefully the podcast adds value above you just seeing the spreadsheets of data uh, and then going and running to research the stock with the greenest bar on it, right? Um, so first thing I'd like to know is what types of data do you look at and what resources do you use when you research stocks? You know, hopefully I'm starting to be one of your data points. Uh, for stocks in the disruptive innovation space, but I'd love to know what stocks you're researching, how you're going about researching them, what metrics you use. Are you using market metrics? Are you just looking at specific stocks in isolation? Are you competing them through some tools or some programs or some resources? What communities you're a part of? I'd love to understand better how you're researching your favorite stocks. Um, I'll just throw this up here real quick. Obviously, nothing on this channel or on ticker symbol U. Uh, is financial advice. I'm just exploring ARK Invest's publicly available data to see what they're holding and why, as well as their publicly available research and trying to tie those two things together for myself, because I do believe that the future of innovation will drive the markets. And likewise, the markets drive the future of innovation and technology. And that feedback loop is what these two channels, ticker symbol U, the main channel, and ticker symbol live, the channel you're watching now, are trying to piece together day by day. So taking a look at the comments, <laughs> lots of people are like proud. First time I'm not late. I deserve coffee. I'll drink my coffee to that. Cheers. So um, let's take a look at the arc reactor, right? So what this is, is this is a tool that I use to explore arc invests fund data and how it works is fairly simple. I have, a, I have a table of all of ARK Invest's holdings across all five of their actively managed ETFs. And there's a couple rows here, excuse me, a couple columns here that I care about looking at day by day. I want to see how much their share count has increased in a given position since the day before. So for example, low 0% numbers in their top, let's say, you know, 15 holdings here. And then we can see that in Unity software, they increased their position by 3% since the last trading day, right? So if I were to pick a stock to talk about today, it would be Unity Software. I can see the current price per share as of yesterday's market close and the change in price from the day before. And that just gives me a quick understanding of, hey, ARK Invest bought this because it dipped or hey, no, ARK Invest bought this even though it didn't dip. So just adding some context to what uh, the market conditions were like when they made that buy or that sell. I like seeing how much money ARK Invest has in a specific position, right? So for example, it's worth noting that ARK Invest has $3.6 billion in Tesla across their five actively managed ETFs, as opposed to Unity Software, where they have about 700 million, right? So about one fifth of that or so. Uh, 
I can see the change in ARC's dollars in that position, so the change in shares and the change in dollars, to understand better, hey, they're increasing their share count because the price went down, or they're increasing their share count because they believe that this price is going to go up in the future or what have you. So keeping track of the percent change in shares, the percent change in price, and thus the percent change in ARC's dollars in that fund or in that stock, which is a function of the number of shares they hold and the price that that stock is trading today. And then of course we have the ARC rank, which is when I combine all five of their actively managed ETFs and I look at them dollar by dollar, the number one rank is the one where they have the most dollars in overall, which is Tesla. Number two is Teladoc. Number three is Square, so on and so forth. And the reason to do this is because diff their five actively managed funds, soon to be six, overlap, right? And that's exactly what we can see on this uh, cumulative bar chart, right? So what this bar chart shows us is for each stock, show me all of the money that they have and color that money by what fund it's in. So Tesla is in ARK K, that's the red bar. It's in ARK W, the green bar, and it's in ARK Q, the blue bar, right? And together, all three of those bars together form that $3.6 billion position, which is responsible for about 8% of all of ARK's money. That is one of almost every $12 ARK has invested today is invested in Tesla, right? That's what this bar length shows me. So all, if you add up all the lengths of these bars, you get to 100. This is a cumulative bar chart. This down here just shows us how big each fund is relative to every other fund. So when we talk about ARK K, we're talking about half of ARK Invest's actively managed dollars. ARK K is as big as the other four funds put together. And a lot of people don't realize that. And that's why I spend so much time talking about and thinking about if we should be talking about ARK K. For example, if I do this, everything changes pretty dramatically. What I've done on screen is excluded ARK K to look at their pure play names, right? Now not overlapping funds. Now just looking at their thematic four actively managed funds, ARK Q, Autonomy, ARK W, Advanced Internet, ARK G, Genomics, and ARK F, FinTech. And now you can see where stocks are in more than one pure play fund. For example, Tesla is in the Autonomous Revolution Fund, ARK Q, and the Advanced Internet Fund, ARK W. Right, and then you can repeat this whole process and look for stocks, Unity Software, much higher buy, much more standout thing when you don't include ARK K in the mix. Again, that's because RK is responsible for one out of every $2 they actively manage. The other four funds, uh, ARK G, the next biggest at about 20%, ARK W, 15%, and then ARK F and ARK Q, 8 or 9% each, right? Fluctuating day by day. Then we have the Kathy indicator. The Kathy indicator is a measure of how much cash I believe Kathy Wood is holding today. Kathy Wood is the fund manager the chief investment officer and the fund manager on all five of these funds. So the Kathy indicator is a good uh, analog for me because it's one fund manager deciding how many cash-like positions should be in each of the funds she manages. 33 is the number she had in ARK K at the market lows this time last year. So literally, you know, the February, March lows. And the further away you get from 33, the more confident you can be that some of those positions are cash-like positions because ARK Invest cannot just charge you money to hold a bunch of cash, right? So what we're looking at is the growth of ARK K in number of names, literally just how many stocks are in the fund, knowing that the more they hold, the more Kathy Wood seems to be, and this is my opinion, not a fact, seems to be amassing cash because she believes we're away from a market bottom. That's all the metric says. And then as the number of funds go down, she's concentrating down the names into just her highest confidence, pure play names, right? The ones she wants to be buying at a discount and is willing to take losses on those cash-like positions to do so. So that's the Kathy indicator. And all we're doing there is tracking that balloon size growing. And when it starts shrinking, we know she's spending. And when we know she's spending, it could be a good indicator for us to ask ourselves what we should be doing. And likewise, as that those funds are growing in names, maybe we should take a look at our own cash positions and make some judgments. So all it is is developing a decent self-reflective habit to take a look at our own portfolios and remind ourselves that managing our cash is a piece of this puzzle. That's it. 
And then the heat map, of course, is just my easy way of seeing all of the stocks at once. So let me just highlight here. And all this does is, hey, there's a big green square. What is that? Well, that's 3D systems. We talked about that last week, right? What is this big red square? This is just cash. And what is this big red square? It's Deer and Co. And we won't talk about that today. And you can see that everything else is pretty uh, yellow, mellow, right? And what's what that means is not big buys, not big sells in any direction. And these colors match these colors that you're seeing on the table, right? So this big outsized buy in uh, 3D Systems Corp, you know, they've increased their percent shares by 25%. And sure enough, if I go all the way down and find the greenest bar, Hopefully it shows up here or else I'm going to look really silly. Of course, it's 3D Systems down at the bottom, 25% increase in shares since last market trading day. The share price hasn't moved, so they're just amassing shares. And as a result, it's increased four ranks, right? So this color is this color. It's the same stock. So that's how I go about picking stocks. The reason we're not talking about one today is because all of the green bars from yesterday to today and the day before we've covered in previous episodes right? So did a good job. We'll focus on unity tomorrow if nothing else changes. But what I want to do now is show you uh, the state of the arc. So I'm going to share my browser screen here. And notably, I'm sharing a browser screen here. That means that this is available online to my Patreons. This is not a plug for my Patreon. I don't have a website. I'm not a very uh, internet savvy guy in terms of like managing my own brand. I really like YouTube. YouTube provides you a lot of wonderful tools, but like a place to publish text isn't really one of them. The community tab is pretty limited. So I, I reached out to other YouTubers and I was like, what do you guys do about communicating via text, but not in real time like Discord? So I manage a big Discord community. The link is in the description below. I encourage you to join that. I encourage you to find me on Twitter and talk to me there. I try to be active in real time, just like this is active in real time, right? Where we go back and forth on comments, you know, and we have fun in real time. So Discord and Twitter are how I do that. But sometimes I want to write a blog post, right? I want to say, hey, I'm reacting to this thing. I'm not going to make a video about it on ticker symbol U. Somebody said something crazy, like Jim Cramer said, Kathy Wood, close your funds, even though you can't close ETFs like that, right? Um... So I react to it on text. Where do I do that? And so people advise me to open a Patreon because Patreon allows you to do all these, you know, direct to supporter or public, you know, text based updates, right? And as a result, I post a lot of the things that I develop on the side, the spreadsheets, the dashboards and whatever on Patreon. And that's how that happened. So that's what you're seeing here. This is one of the things I've since shared with my Patreons, and it's a completely different dashboard. And the purpose of this dashboard isn't to look at changes, it's to look at the state of the arc, hence the name. What is the literal state of the arc today? And you can look back one market week, right? So walking through, the, walking through this dashboard, the controller is really funny, but it's really important to me to have set this up this way. Whoops, I hope that works. I hope that updates soon pretty integral to the show here. Um, the state of the arc, the way it is supposed to work, it's done loading, is you have a controller here. And what this shows you is their change in assets under management, because when they have inflows and outflows, right, what all that means is you need to take that into account when you're looking back in time. These funds grow really fast. And you can see that they grow and shrink by large percentages in a single day. You know, two days ago, RKK shrank by over 6%. That's a pretty big deal, right? And what you can do is you can highlight day by day and see that same cumulative bar chart with a lot of interesting facts on the tooltip that I've built for you that I think are important. So overall rank of Tesla is one, right? Its current number of dollars in RKK, 2.5 billion. Same thing, you know, arc rank in arc W is one, uh, cumulative dollars in arc W is 772 million. And you can go down and down the list and pull easy facts just by mousing over stuff, because this is about data exploration. You can also see their total positions broken out by fund here. And this is all five funds in a nice stack bar chart. So you can see, yeah, Tesla makes about 10% of this fund by area. 
Teladoc, number one position here, makes about 7% of the fund. Square, down and down the list. And you can kind of just get a feel for the relative sizes of the funds. Again, RKK is about 50% all of their dollars managed. And you can see that because the red square here is about 50% of about all the squares going on here, right? Almost half of them are red by area. So RKK, roughly 50% of the funds. And that's what you're seeing here as well. 49%, 21%, 15%. The same thing that's on the um, ARC reactor, right? So then you can do a deep dive into an individual fund. That's what's important to me. So I can click this dot of ARC K. And then what will happen is this is browser based now. So it takes a little bit to load. Now we're in a view that's showing us 100% ARC K, right? Here's all the stocks by weight in ARK K. So Tesla, again, about 10% of the fund. You can see the AUM one week history of ARK K, 2.2% average daily gains, right? You can see that ARK K currently has 55 uh, stocks in it. It looks like my camera cut out. Give me a sec. Can you let me know if you can still hear my audio? Audio, okay. Let me. See if I can make some magic happen in real time. Hopefully you can still hear me. I'm still walking through the bar chart. I see that that's still working. So I'm just going to wing it here. Uh, and then you can obviously go fund by fund and you can see things as they update. Again, might take a couple seconds, but now I'm in ARC G. Now I'm in ARC W. You know, and you can go down and down the list. And of course, if I select a certain date, I just get back to all five funds here. Add to stream. Let's see if I can start my camera so you can see my beautiful face. Okay, my camera is failing me today. No problem. So we're just going to rock it like this. So that's the first page of the state of the arc, right? And so if I uncheck the date, now I can see all five dates. I can see all the funds. And what you're seeing here, of course, is uh, all five funds data at once. So this looks a little janky. And this is why, you know, I try to focus on giving this to people who want that early access, right? This is the type of feature that I'd like to get rid of before I make this fully publicly available. So I'm showing you a little bit under the hood, you know, but this is how it's all supposed to come together. You pick a date. It updates, it shows you the number of stocks in that fund, it shows you the breakdown for everything that day, and then it shows you that in that bar chart, right? Great. And of course, there will be a sixth fund added here when uh, Arc X releases later this month, hopefully. So you can scroll down and you can see everything in this bar chart. Great, that's the first tab of the state of the arc. The second, I think, is what people have been asking for for a while. So I went ahead and I made that publicly available. Here is just a chart of uh, the Kathy indicator over time, right? So on March 16th, RK had 55 stocks. That's been consistent all the way across. Uh, ARK W, 55 stocks on March 16th, 53 today. So spent a little money in ARK W. ARK F, you know, same thing, dropped by one. ARK Q didn't drop at all. And now what you can see is the number of holdings in each fund by day in one quick and easy grid. The next value here. So these are the heat maps that I often work with when I'm trying to pull signals out of noise, right? So this is a combined heat map. It looks at March 23rd versus one day before. So very similar to the heat map on the arc reactor. And the color change is the change in percent shares held, right? And we saw that uh, 3D systems increased by 25%. So it's the greenest thing here. And we saw that deer dropped by 12%. So it's the reddest thing here. And as a result, everything else relatively unchanged. And you can actually see, like I tried to print out the values here, lots and lots of zeros. So very uh, mild trading day yesterday for ARK Invest. Totally okay. You know, they're just uh, keeping track of some fund growth, right? But mostly zeros everywhere across the board besides a few threes couple negative twos. So nothing of interest. So I figured today would be a good day to talk about the data expiration, right? We can flip the script and we can also color things by change in rank. Just because things don't move in dollars doesn't mean they don't move relative to each other, right? And so this 
again, is the same data, but much more interesting in terms of like color. And that's because as things drop or rise in cash, just the price action alone is enough to change things in rank. So when you look at percent change in shares, the previous chart, what you're seeing is the amount of buys and sells that ARK actually did, right? But the market moves whether ARK invest buys or not, right? So the percent change in rank, whoops, the, the percent change in rank is changing now because those shares are decreasing and increasing in value. And we can see that Netflix, you know, had a big change in share price. So even though there was no change in shares, you know, it moved up in rank, right? Same thing with uh, all these other stocks, what's going on is as they move relative to each other in the market, their ranks change in ARK Invest holdings accordingly. And now we can say, okay, because Netflix had the biggest change in uh, share price, whether it's because it had a share, change in share price or the ones around it changed in share price, we can talk about Netflix that way. Why didn't ARK buy or sell this? as much as the stocks directly around it in rank. And then finally, we can look at the arc rank over time. So this is a pretty silly plot, but one that I really enjoy looking at. And what this is, is a noodle plot of each uh, ticker that arc holds over time in terms of rank, right? So Tesla is always number one. That's this straight line right at the top here. At the bottom, you can see right before they sell funds, you know, they, they bought them out here. And then you can see a bunch of squiggles that move, you know, up and down over time. So the most volatile squiggle, if I can click it, that's cash. This is their cash position changing over time. It can go as high as rank, you know, roughly 30, the 30th biggest holding is cash, and it can drop down past rank 100, meaning their 100th biggest holding is cash. And this is them literally buying and selling stocks and or amassing and spending and amassing and spending and amassing and spending cash. That's what you're actually seeing here. So this is the kind of stuff that I mean when I say pulling signals out of noise, right? Of course, all of these other things here are stocks. So we can click another stock that's had a, you know, big run down. This is Google, another cash like position. So they had Google and then they spent their position in Google. They sold it to buy other stocks. You know, we can look at stocks with upward trends. So if I can click this big upward line here, we can see that this is Pinduoduo, a stock we've already covered on this channel because they had a massive increase in their position in Pinduoduo last week, which is when we covered it, right? And you can go on and on and down and down this list and just look for interesting signals here, right? The goal again is to look at big changes in rank in not a long period of time and understand what's going on here, right? So this is DraftKings, a stock we haven't covered yet. It might have been worth covering DraftKings back here if there weren't other stocks making those big moves up and down uh, during the trading days in which I covered them, right? But DraftKings could have been a contender in this time block. On and on the list, right? So the point of showing you this is to let you know that there are data discovery tools out there to help you understand what's going on inside ARK Invest's funds day by day, right? Uh, those are available to my patrons, but if you let me know what kind of things you're doing, I'm interested to know, again, you know, what data sources do you look at? Is this kind of stuff interesting to you? Uh, do you look at low-level data like this, or are you reading more single-stock articles? Are you... Uh, looking more at macro trends? Are you looking at sentiment analysis? Does a tool like this fit into your style of research? Or is this kind of just not a good fit for the types of things you even bother looking at for stocks, right? I'm going to try resetting my webcam one more time, and then we'll roll right back into it. So yeah, I'd love to hear in the comments what you think about this kind of stuff. Let me pull down this banner and see what's going on in the comments. So Kathy believes the growth pullback is just a blip on the screen and they're buying instead of sheltering. Yeah, that's a great point. 
Um, so yeah, Kathy is a long-term investor in my opinion. What she does is she looks at what the market is doing and the first thing she asks is why, right? So when she decides that the reason, when she decides that her understanding is uh, that the market is moving for non-stock related reasons, for example, stimulus happens or uh, you know, there's a short report with untrue information uh, or anything else, she will buy that dip because her conviction in the fundamentals of that company have not changed, right? As opposed to, hey, you know, there's a big shakeup in leadership. There's something else going on that's fundamental to that company. She'll unbuy that dip, right? She will sell that stock uh, because, hey, hello, it seems to be working now. Uh, she'll sell that stock because now that change is now that change in price is a reflection of what's going on inside the company. You know what I mean? So yeah, when she sees a pullback, that's just a rotation from growth to value. She's buying that dip because she knows that people will rotate back into growth stocks, right? And when she does, when they do, she will have bought low and she gets to sell high and that's her job, right? So great question. Yeah, so illustrating data is definitely the point here, right? That That's exactly the right way to say this. Illustrating data, it's tough to look at all these spreadsheets and look at them day by day and just be like, what the heck is going on? When you can visualize data, the, the field that I specialize in is visualizing data, literally called data visualization. What that helps you do is understand the insights that you're trying to pull out from that data. And that's the whole focus here. Going back to the Arc Reactor, the tool that I've built for myself that I use. Let's take another quick look at that. Share screen. Going back to this tool. All this does is take a bunch of spreadsheets and look at their changes day by day. Arc Invest provides the spreadsheets publicly, and I'm adding value by visualizing or illustrating that data in a way to quickly generate insights. Those insights being what are the biggest changes in terms of the metrics I care about, change in shares, change in price, change in dollars, change in rank. And then how does that stack up against, you know, if I order everything by conviction, which I can do again, because in every SEC filing for every single one of these uh, funds, they're managed by Catherine D. Wood, and they are conviction weighted. So the same fund manager using the same scheme to manage these five funds. So there's there's some sense in my mind in combining them into one master fund and looking at them that way and generating extra insights from that, right? So I appreciate this comment. Now you see like a little bit of the data behind that, right? I started watching new IPOs because of Kathy. That's right. Yeah. Picking, picking your champions, so to speak, picking people you enjoy following and who you think are much smarter than you in a specific space, whether that space is genomics or the market in general, or, you know, life advice, whatever you have, it's good to have a few champions, right? That you can just point to, listen to, and be like, Hey, this is a good starting point. At least, you know, I'm not starting from nothing. I'm starting from this thing that in this case, Kathy Wood said about Tesla and I'm going from there. Right. And I'm just adding these data points. Hey, Kathy Wood says stuff about Tesla sometimes with her dollars, right? When she buys and she sells and keeping track of what she's saying day by day in units of money in all these stocks could be useful. Uh, I disagree with this comment strongly. Um, I think Tesla's room, I think Tesla is a very, very, very large runway in front of it. Ticker symbol U is going to be talking about Tesla a lot these next few videos because ARK Invest just released their 2025 price target. Um, I have a lot to say about it. Not all of it is uh, agreeable, but um, it's going to be a wild ride these next few weeks as we cover the big ideas that are uh, focused on Tesla, right? So uh, electric vehicles, autonomy, robotics, big data, and all that. Uh, I'll take one more question because it seems my webcam is on the fritz today. I apologize. Uh, does Kathy ever sell Tesla? Yes, all the time. She actively trades the stock. Uh, she trades it around volatility. When it goes up too much, she will sell. When it goes down a lot, she will buy. She absolutely plays the price action. And I think that's actually great because I can't think of one person on the planet who knows more about Tesla besides people who actually work at Tesla 
than Kathy Wood, Tasha Keeney, you know, the people focusing on analyzing Tesla as a cross-platform, cross-technology company. So yeah, if there's ever a person who's going to success- successfully swing trade that stock, I believe it's Kathy Wood. Um, yep, and I believe that uh, buying Tesla two years from now is still going to be a good idea, and probably even two years after that. Uh, can you talk about potential top stocks of ARKX? Yep, uh, I believe it's going to be things like Virgin Galactic, SPCE, Iridium, IRDM, Lockheed Martin. Maybe we'll see some Boeing. Maybe we'll see some Raytheon in there. Depending on how heavy they go on the the technology beneficiaries, you can imagine companies like Netflix and Spotify in there who will benefit from more people on the planet having internet access through satellite-enabled uh, you know, satcoms. Um Depending on how heavy they go on the enablers, I could even imagine Tesla being in there because they specifically called out solar, energy, robotics, batteries, right? All of which Tesla does. I'm not saying Tesla will be a top stock. I'm saying they fit the description of the fund, technically. Um, I can even imagine private companies making their way into the fund. This is more of a moonshot, but uh, Kathy in the past has talked about a public-private option where she gets people... Uh, the ability through her funds to buy into private companies and SpaceX, or in this case, Starlink, would be a great fit for ARCX. So I believe that maybe ARCX is even called ARCX because we might see some shares of Starlink in it. That's a moonshot. Just being super clear, nobody at ARK Invest has ever said that except Kathy Wood mentioned that she would love to see a public-private option during a Bloomberg interview uh, many months ago. What is the, yeah, I, I have no idea. It just depends on what the, you know, it depends on what's in it and what's, you know, how it's weighted and all that. This is this is an impossible question to answer the open price target for Tesla. I think it's going to be between 50 and 150 bucks. Uh, so, you know, not 20 bucks and not 500 bucks, right? So that puts some bounds on it. But I think it's between those bounds, it's a crapshoot. Uh, I'm going to leave it there. My camera is failing me. Uh I hope you've enjoyed this sneak peek behind the scenes of what's going on under the hood, how I choose stocks, the types of tools I've made available on Patreon, uh, the types of stuff I want to get into, right? More interactive, community-based, ground-up research. Uh, I love feedback. I love it when you guys tell me how you do research, what I can be adding value, where I can be adding value, um, what kind of data insights you want generated from this data. So definitely just let me know all of those things in the comments below, or you can tweet me at ticker symbol you. I'll throw that up here one more time. And I wish you a great market open, and hopefully I will fix my camera for tomorrow's live stream. This is ticker symbol live. My name is Alex reminding you that the best investment you can make is in you. Thanks for watching.